place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all of this? Where is this wisdom that, he is, that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them not to, t to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but, wear, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, then refuse to hear you. As you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of God for the people of God. before you today and bring the message, I was very, very excited. I'm a patriotic person. What better day to speak than on July 4th? But now, wait a minute. It's not about patriotism. It's not about July 4th. This is God's house. This is Christianity. This is to be a, a Christian sermon. So how do I marry the two together? Pastor Steve gave me this, this scripture to work with, and I think it worked out pretty good. Now, as, as you heard in the scripture, and, and then just a little bit, I'd like for you to follow along with that scripture from your, your bulletin. You heard that a person has no honor in their house. Now, the house is not necessarily a building. It's their neighborhood or their community. And I'd just like to share with you a few things. Some of you are old enough to remember Johnny Lujak, who was a Heisman Trophy uh, winner back in the 1940s. I knew John. In the town where he lived, it was just John. When he went out of town to speak, he was Mr. Heisman Trophy winner. He was Mr. Football. In his own town, it was just John. Ray Nitschke. Yes, I knew Ray. In his hometown of Green Bay, Wisconsin, he'd go to the hardware store, people just say, hi, Ray, how you doing? You building something today? But when he'd go out of town, he had great honor. Again, Mr. Football. I used to do public speaking in California before I moved here 15 years ago. I traveled all over the state. In my area where I was, it's just me. And I don't know why they did it, but I go upstate places. Some places take out a quarter page ad in the newspaper that I'm coming to town. Little old me. You've got people in this community right here that you probably don't even, are not even aware of. You have a Medal of Honor recipient living in Fort Mill. He works at a bank, and he's a young man about 30 years old. Even his neighbors did not know that he was a Medal of Honor recipient until the DMV out here on Hans Mill Road was dedicated in his name. 
the Vietnam Wall, you have one of the groundbreakers living here in Rock Hill. And in York, a congressional advisor advising the United States Congress how to recognize the Vietnam veterans and welcome them home through the Vietnam commemoration. There's so many more in your neighborhoods that you, you probably never ever will be aware of. Sometime later on, if you want, I'll, I'll share some of these with you because I, I get involved and I know a lot of these people. It's very humbling. So a prophet without honor. Now comes time for you to follow in the bulletin. The rejection of Jesus at Nazareth. Item number one, verse number one. I'm going to relate it to what it has to do with today's society and lifestyle and how it relates to the season of the year, specifically today, July 4th. Actually, the U.S. declared its independence on July 2nd. It wasn't recorded and announced till July 4th. First, let me read you a part of a letter written by John Adams to his wife, Abigail. But the day is past. The second day of July, 1776, will be the most memorable epoch in the history of America. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shoes, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other from this time forward forevermore. You will think me transported with enthusiasm, but I am not. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost us to maintain this declaration and to support and defend these states. Yea, though all the gloom I can see, the rays of ravishing light and glory, I can see that the end is more worth than the means, and that posterity will triumph in the days of transactions, even although we should rue it, which I trust in God we shall not. Verse number one. Our founding fathers left their mother colony and went someplace else. Number two, are you following me in your, in your bulletin? They began to teach the followers or other immigrants about a new way of life in a new world away from persecution, high taxes, and having freedom of speech and religion and more. Where did they get this knowledge? Were these leaders not from English colonies and lived as their fathers and the fathers before them, their brothers, sisters, and family that were with them? Yet many immigrants took offense because they did not understand the power of freedom, the power of freedom that they were about to embark upon. Number four. Just as Jesus said, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. Now this is a new land, a land of opportunity. And they could do no deed of power in this new world except educate a few people and relieve them from their oppression which was left behind in their mother country. And six, and they were amazed at their disbelief. Then they went about among the villages teaching others about a new way of life. And seven, Jesus called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. The new world leaders established what we call a Congress to represent the people and by whereby communicate and educate both in receiving and, receiving and giving 
of information. Number eight, Jesus ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money. And this Congress was established in the same manner. It was to be an honor to serve the people. And nine, they were not instructed to wear sandals in Christ's time, but to, and not to put on two tunics, but they were to display themselves with dignity and honesty. And our Congress to display themselves with dignity and honesty by the people, for the people. And Jesus said to his disciples, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. Today we might interpret this entering a house as congressional representatives entering into conversation or discussion about laws, rules, regulations, and what is right from wrong. Verse 11. In, in the biblical times, the disciples were instructed that if any place were not, will, will not welcome you and they refuse to hear from you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. In the earlier years of our country, the dust left behind has bound us in a more turbulent departure of disagreement. And in number 12, so, they went out and announced that all should repent. Well, I shall leave this interpretation up to you. Just as our country is still in the building and development process, it is best that you make your own decision. And lastly, number 13, the new world leaders cast out many obstacles and offered those immigrating with a future, a future they could build upon. Just like the anointment of oil mentioned in the Bible that was rubbed upon the heads of many who were sick and it cured them. Now, biblical language is hard to understand sometimes. We don't practice that language today. It's evolved. Take the time to interpret and to understand. Making all sense of all this can be easy. It can be easy, simply. There's only one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. There is only one United States of America, and we love them both. And the latter is still under construction. And it will be for only God knows how long. The Bible was written many, many years ago, but it's still a guide to today's modern world and lifestyle. How often do we as individuals, parents, teachers, Leaders use the Holy Bible as a reference to guide us and guide us in our everyday activities, guide us in our home, guide us in our personal decisions. Sometimes we do it consciously, sometimes subconsciously, but do we do it enough? That's up to you to decide. Then we take back a look back at Christ and his 12 disciples, they were all under the age of 18, some as young as 15. We know that Christ lived to be 33. They were young people going out and making people aware that what religion is, that the Christ and, and God, Father, Son, Young people, the leaders. Do we have teenagers today doing that? Things have evolved. And at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the average age was 44 and a half years of age. The youngest, two of them were 26 years old. 50 of them were under the age of 43. So you can see the age has jumped up a little bit. And now here we are 245 years later, our leaders today, are they old like me? Yeah, sadly. Should they be young? The teenagers? If you empower them, you teach them, 
you honor and respect them, especially in their own home and home territory, let them become the leaders, not the boss. Let them become leaders. This kind of, this Declaration of Independence was signed by religious people. The Episcopalian was the highest. Yeah, there was one Roman Catholic, and I remember when President John F. Kennedy was elected, oh my God, we're going to have a Catholic in the White House. What difference does it make? He's a, a leader, a young leader. He is a man of religion. He's a man of God. He believes in Jesus Christ. All of these people that signed this Declaration of Independence were followers of God and believers in Jesus Christ. Nowhere in my research could I find an atheist that signed the Declaration of Independence. So let today, Independence Day, be a new beginning. Just as 245 years ago it was signed and Christ was born 2,021 years ago, as we reflect back on our own life, everything has changed except honor, love, integrity, respect, responsibility, and faith. They all remain the same. How often do we exercise it? That's the question. Let's practice these as we celebrate. And thank God for the wonderful opportunity provided by our fathers before us. God made the heaven and the earth. He created human life. He gave us mothers. Mothers gave us birth. He gave us fathers. And fathers have fought for freedom. They've given their lives. God then gave us his only son, Jesus Christ, who was sacrificed to save the sinners of the world. As we celebrate July 4th, Independence Day, for the United States of America, when we broke from England, remember it was due to taxation without representation, but mostly due to religious persecution. But if you want total and true independence and freedom, seek and accept Christ. God gave Christ to the world. Take that gift. Accept that gift. And when you do, I ask you, what will your Independence Day be? Will it be of hot dogs and fireworks? Or will it be of doing God's work by following the examples of Christ? Perhaps a little bit of both would be a good balance. Happy birthday, America. God bless America. And Christ, thank you for leading us. And I thank you for the opportunity to let me speak. Hopefully my message has come across good. Hopefully the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your month, the rest of the year, the rest of your lives, be of independence through Christ. Amen. Oh my gosh, where do I go from here? Let's sing America the Beautiful. <laughs>